In this episode, we're going to take a hard look at the van before we modify anything to see how it handles on dirt and on the street and make plans for how to change and improve that. We're on ExpeditionPortal.com quite a bit where we meet up with other crazy people wanting to lift their vans and take them off-road. And Screwball48 over there had a wonderful idea. He recommend we film this van before we modify anything and see how it drives on the road and on the dirt to make a comparison afterwards. From the factory, Fred came with independent front suspension with coil springs in two-wheel drive form. Ford never manufactured these in four-wheel drive, so if you want four-wheel drive, you have to make modifications to it or send it to a company that will do so. The bad news about having to convert your van to four-wheel drive is you have to lift it considerably. With a big, strong Dana 60 front axle in the front, the solid front axle, it gets in the way when it articulates. So you either have to severely limit up travel or trim the cross member and lift it quite a bit. When I picked up Fred, he had a Dana 60 from a 1997 F350 swapped into it using a Tulsa truck manufacturing suspension. Now they don't do too many of these vans. Tulsa truck manufacturing is more famous for the big, ginormous like fire trucks converting those to four wheel drive. And I'm not super thrilled with how they did this. It basically looks like they took a 97 F350 and swapped the whole front end over. You'll notice that it has the shackles in the front for the leaf spring. Let me explain why this is a bad idea with lifted springs. Here's how we're set up right now in the rear. Pivot in the front, leaf spring, and a shackle in the back. When the rear wheel hits a bump, the bump forces the tire up. And that ends up squishing the leaf spring to a flatter profile and the rear shackle picks up the slack. In turn, that moves the rear wheel back a little bit, which is good. We want the rear wheel moving backwards in the same direction the bump's coming. Now up front, it does just the opposite with the pivot in the rear and the shackle in the front. When a bump is introduced, the front wheel moves up and forward as the spring flattens. This goes against the force of the bump, resulting in a harsh ride, especially when you combine it with short, stiff springs like the ones that were on the van when I bought it. In the rear end, they kept the stock Dana 60 axle found on the E350, which has drum brakes, but it's a good axle, good strong full floater axle. And they added a few leaf springs to the leaf pack to stiffen it up. They also added about a four inch block to the rear leaf springs. Now blocks are a cheap way to get lift out of the back, but under high torque and bouncing situations, you get a lot of axle wrap. Since I plan on towing with this, I'm getting rid of the blocks in the rear and going to a, just a leaf spring that's meant for that ride height. According to the previous owner, this van has 373 gear ratio in the front and rear and 33 inch tires on 16 inch wheels. It's always a good idea to take measurements of your vehicle before you modify anything so you can compare later. From the center of the hub to the bottom of the fender is 28 inches. From the ground to the pinch seam right behind the driver's door is 22 and a half inches. From the center of the rear wheel to the bottom of the rear fender is 28 inches. From the ground to the rain gutter is 88 inches. The wheelbase is 139 inches. The outer edge of the rear tire aligns perfectly with the side of the van. Let's take a look at how this van handles. In this test, we have three camera views. Underneath the van, inside the van, and outside the van. First, we'll take the van on a dirt road at 10 miles an hour. Right away, you can see that there's really not much up travel on the front suspension. Even at 10 miles an hour, the ride's pretty bumpy. From the outside, it really didn't look that bad, though. After watching this footage, one thing that really started to worry me is how close the pitman arm gets to the leaf spring.
Notice how much the van shifts its weight front and back over these dips. That really bottoms out the springs. Here I'm really feeling the negative effect of the short springs. It's jostling me around quite a bit. And remember, this is only 10 miles an hour. Check out how close this pitman arm gets. If I were to hit a speed bump, the springs would definitely contact the drag link. For the second test, I'm gonna turn around and drive the same stretch of road in the opposite direction at 20 miles an hour. I thought it was bumpy at 10 miles an hour, but this was ridiculous. I could do this in about 45 miles an hour in my 4Runner with no problems, and I think I'm just starting to see the limitation of a van or huge heavy vehicle in general. After bottoming out hard a few times, I decided to take it easy and back the test back down to 15 miles an hour, where it was still incredibly bumpy. This test beat the van up way too much, so I decided to stick to pavement. That was 20. For the next test, I decided to head down the road and drive at the posted speed limit of 25 miles an hour. On the road, the van actually drives pretty well. The springs are stiff, so there's no body roll. But when you run into an abrupt bump with both front wheels at the same time, the van gets a bucking bronco effect. It just overwhelms the suspension. This could be due to poor shocks, it could be due to the wrong spring rate or spring length, or maybe having the shackle in the front, but it's gotta be fixed. Apart from the bucking bronco effect and the overall stiff ride, the van does really well on the road. For the last test, I decided to drive down a highway at about 50 miles an hour to see how much steering wheel input the van needed to stay straight. As you can see, this van needs some help in the suspension department. I've been a big fan of Chris at You Join Off Road's vans. He builds some of the coolest vans out there. And from the reports we've read, everybody loves the handling on them far better than stock. So we reached out to Chris and partnered with him, so he'll be sponsoring this build. And we came up with the idea of running a six inch lift kit from You Join Off Road. Now that shouldn't lift the van too much, but there are some significant changes that need to be made. First off, the front shackle will be moved to the back, which is wonderful, which should have happened from day one. Also, the springs are longer, so they're not going to bottom out as quick on whoops and on the road and off-road. It should be a much more controlled, smoother ride. Unfortunately, the 6-inch lift kit from U-Joint is not compatible with this 97 front axle. So I'm going to have to get rid of this front axle and find a new one from an 01 to 04, and I'd like to get a Dana 60 instead of the Dana 50. They're both strong, but the Dana 60 might be a little bit easier to find parts down the road if I need to. With that new axle comes a different wheel pattern, unfortunately. So I can't run these wheels and tires on the new axle. Now you're starting to see the dollar signs add up in my head. It probably would have been cheaper to buy a stock van and convert it to four-wheel drive using Chris's kit. But it is what it is, and I already have drive lines, I already have the tank cut, I already have the transfer case in, so it's not going to be that big of a deal for me. For wheels, we're going to go with a 17-inch wheel on a 35-inch tire. Now, I would love 37s for looks alone, but my friends that know a lot more about towing than I do convinced me to stick with 35s because it'll tow better, get a little bit better mileage, put less wear and tear on the drivetrain. So moving up to 35s, I'm going to want to change the axle gear ratio from 373s to 410s. And since the new front axle has a new bolt pattern, I have two options in the rear. I could go with wheel spacers in the rear to widen the stance a little bit and switch the bolt pattern to match the front bolt pattern. But I'm not a huge fan of wheel spacers. So I'm going to source a 10.5 inch sterling out of an 05 to 07 F350 which is a little bit wider. Chris has a kit to make the e-brake work with it and U-bolt plates and stuff. And I won't have to run wheel spacers. That takes care of the suspension department. Since we're going to be spending a lot of time inside the van traveling around the US, a good sound system is a must. 
I don't need to blow the windows out with insane subwoofers, but I do want something full and rich sounding. We also have some cool plans for the interior. We're not going to go crazy and add tons of cabinets and a sink and cook's top or anything like that, but we do want storage capacity. We want a place where we can crash and sleep in it at night, and we want a way to be able to store the bikes. So something modular that works well with action packers um, is what we're thinking. My wife, Teresa, is in charge of the interior design, so we're going to leave that to her and see what she comes up with. On the roof, I really want to run solar panels so we can have a big battery bank in here. When we get an RV, there's going to be a air conditioning unit on top and maybe some fantastic fans, which is going to limit the amount of solar we can put. However, on the van, we can completely cover the top with solar panels. Now, I don't know anything about solar panels or battery banks, so I've got a lot of learning to do. Please be patient with me as I make a lot of mistakes, but I think it'd be cool to have this be able to charge computers and laptops and run a fridge all the time without having to plug in anywhere and possibly even transfer some of this power to the trailer and have this charge the trailer. I don't know, got a lot of research to do. That may not even be possible. So those are the plans for the van. I hope that makes sense to you. It makes sense to me and whether it makes sense to you or not, doesn't matter. It's my van, I'm gonna build it how I want. But uh, you guys have been great. Lots of good input, especially on Expedition Portal. Lots of good ideas on how to make this the ideal van for us. As you watch the upcoming episodes, it's going to be very clear that I am not a professional electrician, car stereo installer, or even mechanic. I know enough to keep it safe, but I don't know all the tricks of the trade, so you're going to see me doing things the hard way, messing up, probably hurting myself. It's going to kill you professional mechanics out there to watch this, but I hope you find it entertaining. And those of you that have never done something like this, I hope you get a little bit of confidence to see that it doesn't take a genius to do this. If I can do it, anyone can do it with a lot of research. With that said, this is not a how-to video. Do not repeat anything I do. This is more a how not to do this, but I hope you find it entertaining.